the Filmic Pro app on the Xperia 5 Mark II. How cool is that? And what is that there in the background? Uh, welcome to a new video. I'm testing out right now Filmic Pro application on the Xperia 5 Mark II. Handheld shot with the main lens. Filmic Pro is set to 24 frames per second, 1080p, full HD, recording OIS and EIS enabled. And I think this works pretty nicely as a vlogging setup. I have my headphones plugged into the headphone jack and using the microphone here. And I think the sound quality is also pretty nice of the MH410C headphones that I'm recording with here. And yeah, Filmic Pro application costs a little bit on the Play Store. You can get a free version as well with some limitations. But I think you can also pay a little bit more to get the full potential out of the cameras on the Xperia 5 Mark II, of, you know, 1 Mark II and uh, 1 and 5 as well. So I think this setup works pretty nicely also for vlogging. I could imagine that this might be a better setup than of course the Sony native camera application that doesn't have the possibility to record audio externally or even the um, Cinema Pro application that does have a worse stabilization and only allowing me to record in 21 by 9 and HDR, HLG, which I have to in post-production yeah, edit out and uh, yeah, color grade a little bit. And of course also there's an issue when it comes uh, to uh, the external microphone. Um, I have to manually set it up and uh, that uh, depending on which microphone I'm using it uh, I forget and then I have to in post-production raise it up again and it might be a little bit too uh, noisy in the background and of course auto exposure one of the biggest problem I'm running around here amongst trees where my face got uh, different exposure levels because the sun is shining as well and I'm I, by the way in Germany here in wonderful park next to the uh, what is it horse race track in Weidenpesch so pretty nice weather here right now it should rain in a few minutes though but i think we're getting here spring weather again and you can see it's pretty nicely here you might hear the cars uh, passing by because i'm near the road but there's a wonderful park behind me and yeah i want to try out some of the uh, possibilities what you can do with your filmic pro application i will show you the interface as well but first let's test out the other cameras with the uh, Filmic Pro application on the Xperia 5 Mark II. So this is now a video recording with the super wide angle camera of the Xperia 5 Mark II with the Filmic Pro app 1080p 24 frames per second again EIS enabled and you can see it might be better a bit better stabilized than the default camera that has OIS and EIS enabled and yeah that shows the flexibility of the filmic pro application because the filmic pro application has the ability to simply switch the camera lenses uh, not on the fly so when i'm recording not but when i'm just simply uh, before i record i can set the camera that i want to use and it works pretty nicely and it has also the possibility to use the telephoto camera and I can also use the selfie camera so let's see how the selfie camera looks like with Filmic Pro so and now a recording with the front facing camera there there and uh, yeah I think it's a bit dark a bit underexposed if I go like this it's a bit better but uh, the yeah a wind will uh, ruin this shot i have eis enabled again in filmic pro i think also for vlogging where you can see yourself this might be also an interesting setup i never tried this because usually i don't like to look at myself i like to look at the sensor itself so the camera lens uh, makes it a bit easier otherwise you're just looking uh, uh, past people which is i think not the ideal solution anyway this is how handheld uh, because handheld it, it means that the stabilization works a little bit better for some reason if i have it on my selfie stick then where do i have my selfie stick uh, here 
if I put it on my selfie stick then it is more unstable you can see more jiggling and uh, wiggling around which you don't have when you're using it handheld and it's a bit weird to hold it handheld because it's a little bit tiring and I cannot do long takes but maybe for vlogging it might be interesting so and uh, now 4k recording with the filmic pro application in its filmic extreme settings so you get the best image quality that is possible hopefully so what do you think it will be of course downscaled to full hd in this case um, because i don't want to render and edit 4k videos it just takes too long and takes too long to upload but um, the quality should be a little bit better than the previous recordings with the main camera what do you think of course i'm also possible in, um, it's also possible to record in the super wide angle and 4k and the best resolution and best quality ever and uh, this is what you see right now to cover the microphone so the wind noises will not uh, yeah disturb this audio setting yeah this is the best quality setting that you can get with the ultra wide and so the ultra wide in general is a little bit more soft but what do you think about this ultra wide footage with uh, 4k downscale to full hd and filmic extreme megabit per second uh, encode with the front facing camera without stabilization enabled i'm able to record in 3k at least this is what filmic pro shows me here right now and what do you think about this quality here i think i don't move around so much the uh, focus is fixed anyway but uh, what do you think about this quality is it better what you would have expected of the front facing camera of the xperia 5 mark ii and probably also the one mark ii um, write it down in the comment section back in the studio i want to show you the ui of the film pro app so just start it and go into my uh, landscape mode and this is basically what you see in the ui you have a volume meter here for your microphone and now it is using the internal microphone it will change to ext if i have an external microphone plugged in and you have the main user interface here with a shutter button at the top at the bottom i mean and uh, the play button uh, where i can see all my recordings that i did uh, with the configuration button where i have the possibility to configure several things like i have the possibility to change my resolution you can see it's 4k 2160p and filming extreme as a codec option here and of course i can change uh, first of all the codec to hevc if i don't like avc and of course i can change the filmic quality levels and the uh, recording as uh, well here i can also change the aspect ratio if i want to film something for tiktok or other uh, platforms that need other aspect ratios i have the option to set it up here i can also set cinema like uh, aspect ratios here if i uh, want to record something cinema cinematic under frame rates i have the option to select my frame rate you can see i have capture and playback frame rates that i can set separately and i can go up to 120 frames per second which is i think pretty cool this is the standard one i have also the time lapse one where i have the option to choose uh, different other things if i want to record a time lapse which is also possible with filmic pro and i can set up the shutter here to either be 50 or 60 hertz this is um, in regards to uh, flickering and of course i have uh, the option to change the playback frames per second as well so let's go back to standard and here i also have the possibility to uh, usually i can also switch let's go to 50 i can switch also the capture fps to something else like 48 if i want it something like this i can go here you can see i can set it to 40 so i have the possibility to change my frames per second captured and then uh, the playback as well if i want to do some special effects or so but by default i would yeah, keep it to 24 this is what i recorded my videos with keeps the files a bit smaller as well but you can go also up to 60 or 120 frames per second audio you can adjust here as well just like for example you can say i only want to record video no audio 
and I want to have voice processing which tries to enhance the voice levels a little bit and headphone monitoring I can turn it off here I didn't have this turned off this is why you see me in one video clip um, pulling uh, my headphone out of my ear because I had this headphone monitoring on but on the other hand it was handy for detecting wind noises in this case when I was recording this was a bit windy so I have this on also to detect wind noises so this is pretty nice that you have this option uh, so that you can see or hear in this case if your audio is working fine then under device you have some other options for a third-party devices just like if you have a gimbal or something like this you can uh, configure this here as well and you have the option to also change the noise reduction either to fast or high quality depending on uh, the lighting conditions uh, you can change this of course and the same goes for sharpness you can change to fast or high quality as well uh, which might uh, take a little bit more to pro processing and you have some presets you can change presets here or save this presets that uh, preset that i uh, configuration that you created and have a preset then to easily switch between for example 24 frames cinematic video or 60 frames vlogging video or something like this uh, under cms you have uh, some other options just like where do you want to save uh, the video files you can have internal or external storage smb network backup is also possible and content management is also possible which allows you to set uh, um, yeah, copyright uh, information uh, into the file as well like scene and take especially if you're really creating movies it might be very handy on the hardware you have more options regarding uh, third-party hardware just like the gimbal that you want to use dji osmo mobile for example Zhiyun, uh, smooth 4 uh, movie cinema robot or anamorphic adapters that you added to the lens uh, horizontal image flip is possible or 35 millimeter adapter uh, syncing is uh, a feature of filmic sync which allows you to uh, sync stuff up with various devices and you have to log in or sign up for this and community will guide you through the website and other options if you need some help um, uh, first light is another third-party application that you can use if you want to improve your experience you can change the um, image stabilization here turning it off especially useful if you are having your uh, device on a tripod ois only or eis only or ois and eis combined this works only on the main camera and now we go to cameras which is the wide angle camera uh, if you go to tele for example the only thing that you oh you have OIS and EIS here as well yeah so you have well, it's blinking now for some reason you have both options also for the Taylor one uh, for the ultra wide you only have the EIS option and you see one disadvantage is like if you switch cameras and you have OIS EIS activated um, it will if OIS EIS is not possible on this uh, camera it will just turn itself off and if you have EIS on the wide angle camera super wide angle camera activated it will stay in EIS so we have to click here again to OIS EIS which I think produces the better results then you can turn on the torch as you can see here torch light if you need some light and you have some guiding lines that you can enable or disable if you want to so these are the settings here uh, now you can see that we have two squares one is for exposure lock so let me put this phone in here and you can see it is getting a bit dark I can lock the exposure now on this phone and here this thing is the focus lock and for some reason it went to black right now uh, I think the app crashed uh, never mind you have the exposure lock here if it is red means it is locked and I can also lock the um, focus if I want to just by tapping it and if it's red then the focus is locked and the exposure is locked and there's no auto focusing or auto exposure anymore and uh, you have of course the option to uh, change this and um, adjust this you can see this little color icon here if I click on yeah, if I click next to the color icon I have the option to manually set the exposure up and down usually it will also automatically show this you can see what I'm uh, configuring here is uh, it crashed really let's try to open up again there we go uh, so I can set up here the, my exposure levels as you can see here make it brighter or make it a little bit darker it is adjusting now the uh, ISO level but if I click on here I can adjust also the shutter speed 
and uh, as you can see I can sh set 1 to 300 and what is it 64 or something like this I can sh set it up again it automatically adjusts the ISO and have three dots see if I click on the dots I can change to moderate ISO bias so automatic uh, ISOs that it is automatically switching to low ISO bias uh, and high ISO bias so where I have the option to set this up as well if I want to change the focus I have on the other side the focus wheel and I can manually adjust the focus as you can see to make it now sharp and what I miss like here is it detected uh, it has like some region here as well where it tells me where it thinks it is sharp uh, but I don't have like a in Cinema Pro where I can slide the focus automatically between two points at least I did not find uh, this uh, I have here focus pull speed that I can change with this little horizontal slider so you can see I can go up to 10 so it is like very fast or I can make it a bit more cinematic by going down to 1 and you now you can see it is a little bit smoother and the same goes also for uh, exposure pull speed that it can also change here so depending on how fast I'm here changing the exposure I can change things up if you set anything up here and you go out of here you can see that the exposure is locked as well as the focus is locked if I click here I can unlock the focus at least um, I can lock it again or I can click here to unlock and lock the uh, exposure then I have this little A button no, actually is it A button I don't know if I click on this I have some other options just like for example I can set up uh, what is this I think this is highlighting the camera has some issues for some reason highlight so it will just show me the highlights for some reason the camera pro app the uh, filmic pro app has some issues so let's restart it again so let's go to a again so exposure highlighting so it's tell you, telling me zebra stripes what is like uh, overexposed eventually and of course i have also um what is this uh, another highlighting option where it tells me where are the highlights here you can see this white table here is showing in red and this blue is showing me also yeah there's a bit overexposed here I have some other options here to tell me the same thing and of course I have a focus speaking which tells me where uh, my focus point is right now and of course I can uh, also zoom in with this slider here if I want to you can see that it is now well, slightly in focus with the 15 if I go a little bit further away you can see it but the 2 is not so much in focus so I go to here and I can change the focus slider you can see now ah perfectly in focus now so this focus speaking option is very very handy if you want to manually focus on something and then if you go out of here uh, the exposure you can unlock again you have your focus locked and yeah this is pretty nice you have a timer on the bottom and if you click on the timer you can see histogram you can uh, click again on the timer to see the uh, wave levels here as well which is for a smartphone it is ridiculously cool to have such thing and again to going back it will show your settings as well 1080p 24 frames per second your battery level and your storage and oh uh, yeah this is basically everything here you can change your white balance still so you have the option to choose between different options here like uh, bob light sunlight uh, cloudy artificial light automatic i think it is or these are two settings that you have and here is automatic so you have two manual settings that you can choose from then you have some other options here there's some more information that you can get cinematic cinematographer kit i think you have to purchase for vlog uh, and lock uh, options and the same goes i think also for for these options here yes you have to have this uh, and you have to buy this as well uh, let's go back we have also here the kelvin temperature for white balance if you want to uh, fiddle around with this and fq uh, photo quality fo I don't know what it focal quality I don't know what it is I have to say and you can not click it really these are basically yeah this is basically in a run through the options here you can see 
internal and uh, I think I can not click on it um, and all the options here information that you can get quick start guide user manuals and as well there are several videos out there about filmic pro and all the options this is uh, the android version running on the xperia 5 mark 2 and this is a short little introduction and overview of the application um, running on the xperia 5 mark 2. so this is basically everything for the xperia 5 mark 2 1 mark 2 5 and 1 and the filmic pro application how you like the filmic pro application is the quality better than Cinema Pro? Uh, what do you think about the user interface? What do you think about the price of the application itself? And yeah, would you buy it? Just write it down in the comment section. That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.